Every year, more than 8 million tons of plastic enter the ocean. Bags, cups, straws, and many other items from the daily life of every person. But despite such a tremendous figure, scientists have spent the last 10 years trying to figure out where it was going. After all, garbage patches on the shores and even entire islands drifting in the oceans make up only an insignificant fraction of all waste. So where does the plastic go? The problem with plastic in the seas arose not so long ago, from the middle of the 19th century when the world industry began to massively used petrochemicals to produce various goods. Lightweight, durable, and moldable plastic has become so popular that it is used in all areas of human life. Even the device you are watching this video from now has plastic parts. However, plastic has one drawback. If it is disposed of, it takes a very long time to decompose. As Professor Richard Thompson says, we don't yet know how long it takes plastic to degrade in the natural environment. We've only been mass-producing plastic for around 60 years, and the likelihood is that all of the conventional plastics we've ever made are still with us on the planet, unless they've been incinerated. This feature has led to the fact that plastic is simply thrown away after use, often in the seas and oceans. This is especially true for poor countries, for which plastic recycling is too expensive. As a result, in the world today, there are five large accumulations of waste and rubbish in the Indian, Pacific, and Atlantic Oceans. The largest of them covers an area of 1.6 kilometers. It's like two states of Texas. This spot drifts between California and Hawaii and has its own name, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, GPGP. We talked about how they fight it in our other video. After a series of studies in which scientists measured most of the garbage islands in individual spots, they came to an unusual conclusion. They contain only a small part of all the plastic that is annually thrown into the oceans. To understand where plastic waste goes, scientists from various countries began to conduct their own experiments. So, researchers from the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute used special remote-controlled underwater vehicles to take water samples at a depth of 200 meters. After studying the data, they came to an interesting conclusion. Once at a depth of one liter of water, 15 pieces of plastic could be found. The same figure is noted in garbage patches that drift in the oceans. Another group of scientists from the International Marine Litter Research Unit conducted their own research on the decomposition of plastic waste. As a result, they learned that one standard plastic bag can be torn into more than 1.7 million pieces. The division of plastic into small fragments less than 2 millimeters in length occurs for various reasons, due to mechanical processing, improper incineration, or simply being thrown into local waters. Once they have turned into microplastics, most of the waste enter the oceans through rivers and seas. They cannot be stopped even by water purification filters, which are simply not able to capture such small particles. According to the scientist Van Sebel, from 1950 to the present day, more than 196 million tons of plastic could have sunk to seas and ocean floors. It goes without saying that such a huge amount of waste could not but affect the lives of the inhabitants there. First of all, microplastic affects the life of all types of fish that eat it along with normal food. According to some ecologists, fish are simply not able to distinguish plastic from their usual food, so they don't even try to protect themselves from it. As a result, microplastics begin to accumulate inside the fish, killing them or making them toxic. Irish biologists estimate that almost 70% of all fish in the world already have microplastics inside them. In the future, an even more unpleasant truth may be revealed. Scientists from the University of California have put forth the theory that microplastics can smell attractive to fish, as a result of which they even begin to prey on it, accumulating in coastal areas. Due to the migration of fish, desertification of oceans can occur, when all marine life far from the coast will simply disappear. Now, American scientists are conducting experiments based on the results of which this theory will be confirmed or refuted. Microplastics also affect coastal life. Even on a clean beach, Professor Richard Thompson finds debris. As our work has so clearly shown, we find microplastics in every sample of beach sand, 
whether it's in Australia, Asia, Europe, North or South America. What happens to fish happens to birds, crayfish, turtles, as well as to other animals. After such results, the statement of British environmentalists from the Ellen MacArthur Foundation does not seem unbelievable. They believe that if garbage disposal continues at the same pace, then by 2025 there will be a kilogram of plastic for every 3 kilograms of fish. And by 2050 there will be more garbage in the seas and oceans than fish. Some skeptics put forward a rather interesting theory, according to which microplastics do not float at great depths, which means that after many years, healthy marine life will return from the depths of the ocean. To test this version, Anela Choi, a professor of oceanography at the University of California, San Diego, assembled a team. They found that even at great depths, there are microplastics, and almost in the same amount as at medium or low depths. But how does he get there? After all, ordinary plastic waste is light and often sinks to shallow depths. In the course of a series of studies and experiments, it was found that part of the plastic can affix to a heavier substance and be dragged to the bottom with it. But the more common route for microplastics to sink is through the animals themselves, namely red crabs and giant larvations. Part of the plastic, as in the situation with heavy substances, simply attach to them and sink together into the depths. Another part is absorbed and dissolved below after their death. Thus, the Anella Choi group was able to prove that microplastics accumulate throughout the depths of the ocean. If you do not pay attention to the problem, then soon humanity will face a massive death of marine and coastal animals, an increase in toxicity in food, and as a result, a higher incidence. There are two ways to prevent this. Firstly, try to reduce your consumption of plastic goods plates, forks, spoons, etc. And secondly, actively remind the state of the need to find a solution to the problem of plastic recycling. Do you think these are enough ways to stop plastic pollution in the oceans? Please do not forget to write your suggestions in the comments below the video.